Okay, today is uh, Friday, July 24th here with Andre. We're covering APC on subject property 4409 Santa Fe Lane. And uh, as I was explaining, I have got, well, three screens open. I'm using two right now. I have Detris opened in two different browsers so that I can run different sessions mm -hmm. inside Netris with one the same login on each session, but it's, it allows them to run independently. Um, so what I've done is, is I went in and I just sort of, I see here, if I look at, at um, this screen here, which I believe is the one that you see, what yes. we find is that the subdivision is called Seville of the Highlands. Okay. And what I did initially, which uh, didn't yield enough reserve, uh, results, and, and what I often do, is I'll go in and I'll take that Seville of Highlands. Let's see if that's, no, it's not going to do it. So it's Seville of Highlands. Okay. And I'll just put a wild card in there. And let's see if anything pops up here in the last year. Must be of the Highlands. There we go. Okay, it's not going to cooperate. Hold on, it's here. It's Seville of the Highlands. Let me just copy that directly. I don't think it's case sensitive, but we'll find out here. Um, go ahead and put a wild card back in there. And it should give me a couple of well, there's one. Or maybe you could um, put the wild card after Seville and, and, and delete of the Highlands. I've done that before. Yeah. Um, and McKinney. Let's see what that does for us. Good idea. Oh, wow. That got us a lot more than... Hold on. Hi, baby. I'm on a call with Andre. Do you need something? Yeah, this bill from Avery is not ours. It's two bills combined. I'll can I talk to you later about it? Yeah, okay. Bye -bye. All right, bye. Okay, good call there, Andre. Let's see where that puts us here on the map. See if that does the trick. Okay. That did. That really helped. Okay. It's funny how agents will see this uh, they left out add or addition right so mm. these subdivisions are not consistent at all through netris even mm. though they're they may be on the tax rolls it's crazy how it, and so what you did is absolutely the best way to do it um and so that's what we're going to use because that gives us a great sample right there all right so now that i have those um, I want to go back a year with APC. Okay. okay. Uh, really, I just want to take a, a, a gander here and see, um, yours, your square footage on, on your home was, um, 2442 and it's a four bedroom, two and a half bath. If I look at these, mm. what I see is it's a little skewed towards yeah. smaller houses down here. Yeah. Um, and he has a pool. And he has a pool. Wow. There's very mm. few that have pools. So it's going to be tough unless we go outside of the area really to comp that. I I think we can comp it. I want to stay inside that area, inside that subdivision, because I know that the homes in a situation that a subdivision like this are typically going to be of similar finish. Now, yeah. the other thing I want to sort of check on here is uh, the date they were built. And let's see, if I look at 
two line, that's going to give me the construction date, 1990. Some of these were built back in 86, 87. Yeah. That's pretty well made by four. All right. I don't know that that's a quite a big enough difference to make some adjustments. Let's just play with it, run with it as, as it is for now. We've got a reasonable sample. We've got 31 um, data points here. All right. Now, the reason why I first do this on Netris is because APC is a little limited in terms of what it can do. Let me go ahead and log into APC here. Oh, come on. Why didn't it? It's, oh, it's APC data. Sorry. Okay, let's just go ahead and log in here. I'm going to go to new chart. Let's add the property. Okay. Now, if you want to try to follow along on your version of APC, then okay. you'll have your own data set. If I do it all on mine and send it to you, you won't have the ability to edit it or play with it. Ah, uh, okay. So let me know when you get caught up and we'll do this simultaneously. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. So, um, just basically, uh, once I, once I get to the home screen, I just, uh, click on the, the, the drop down arrow on the new chart new chart and you want property analysis. Yeah. We're not doing right. uh, investment property. Okay. And uh, just put in the address. Okay. Man, Smarty set me up with an AI bot and it's just blowing my phone up. <laughs> I really okay. like for you to meet him. Um, okay, are you here? Yes. All right. So it's 4409 and it was Santa Fe. Let me get the correct. Hold on, is that an old URL? Here it is. Okay, what I should do is put it on, let me go back over here. So I have another instance of Netris open over here. I'm gonna ah, okay. put it on the subject property. All right, here we go. So it's Santa Fe Lane. Mm -hmm. So we can go back here and put in Lane. Kenny, Texas, 75070. Square footage is going to be 2442. Now, um, this is where you would add a client. Okay. So you can do that. All I'm going to do is just select me and you okay. can just select yourself. If you want, you don't have to necessarily put their client info in. And then I like to just kind of right click on the picture in Netris, the old picture and do a save as just put it in. I just drop it in downloads and, call it 4409 and then I'll go pick it up here and just put it in my uh, photo thing. Yeah. So here it is 4409. Okay. So let me know when you're caught up. Okay.
Okay, I got them added. Okay, perfect. All right, so we're going to hit submit. And when you scroll up, it says property successfully added. Close that. Mm -hmm. Now let's go in and select the property. Whoops. Now I go ahead because there are, um, there's some townhouses and stuff in there. I'm just going to put single family detached here. We've already discussed the year criteria. I'm not going to change that yet, okay. but we are going to use your advice and type in Seville and then enable wildcard. So I'm going to okay. hit add and then enable wildcard. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the zip code in so we don't get in some other area. Okay. And it automatically selects the date range for us. Okay. So I have to hit add here. Make sure you hit add. So it populates the zip code up here. And then I'm just going to hit search. You're spinning like mine is? Yeah, yeah, mine's loading also. Okay. You have any big plans for the weekend? Uh, I do. Yeah. Okay. Tomorrow is bulk trash day. I got a bunch of construction <clears throat> trash I got to haul off from the house. And okay, then, gotcha. Uh, then I get to go pick up tile for the upstairs fireplace uh and some work we're doing up in the media room um what else do i have going on yeah you have a lot going on <laughs> yeah and then my wife's leaving sunday so we're gonna we're gonna fill out some uh estate planning stuff saturday and she leaves sunday she's gone all right cool. do you see what i got here Yes, my mine is well. Mine just has generate chart. It doesn't have those other tabs right there. It doesn't have enable circle or enable polygon. It just has generate chart. Do you have the same number of results? Uh, no, I have seven. All right, let's review and see why. What's different about the criteria here? Um, check your criteria and make sure they're the same is what I have going on here. Did you enable the wildcard search? Uh -huh. Yes. Um, you enabled the zip code. Oh, I put the year in. That's what it is. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay. Let me put the, take the year out. All right. Yeah. Rerun that. We'll see if that's going to, what kind of a difference that's going to make. Okay, now there it is. Yeah, I have the same now. Okay, perfect. Now, if I wanted to, I could go in here and I could create a polygon and like cut some of these out. But in this case, these are all pretty consistent comps, pretty good and nice tight in a nice area here. There's been a lot of turnover. That's a great area to do real estate in. Lots of turnover in there. I'm going to mm. go ahead and hit generate chart. Okay. And wow, look at that. Boom. Hmm. So as we know, you can see we've got quite a concentration of houses here between, you know, less than 1400 or, or 1600 to 2000 square feet. And then we've got a whole bunch of houses right here that look strikingly like your house okay 
fact, I bet it's the same model. Okay. 2456, 2442, but it looks very similar, just a different elevation. Yeah. Three windows on the bottom floor, two on the top with that high entry. So I bet they're pretty much the same house. Now, what we want to find out is why one of them, like this one, sold at the bottom. So let's just take it. We're going to just do some recon here. And it looks like they, this is not granted. It looks like Formica, but it looks like they've done a bit of updating here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You could tell they did a lot of upgrades. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Certainly the fireplace. Uh, that one has five bedrooms. Oh, this one has five. Mm-hmm. Good observation. Okay. That was this one. And then this one that's for sale for a lot more. Still yeah. on the market. Boy, these pictures are terrible. You're right. <laughs> okay. So you know what this tells me right away is the agent's an idiot because they took the pictures with their iPhone. <laughs> and it's way overpriced. Yeah. Okay. I can just tell that's the original crappy light fixture from the late eighties. Um, you know, they have really haven't done much to this one. Mm -hmm. uh, and oh my God, these pictures are, they just suck. Yeah, they're horrible. Yeah. And it looks like the master's upstairs in this one. It is. I don't, is the master upstairs with. Uh, no, with it's, it's downstairs. Okay. So that, whoever's got that thing listed is a complete knucklehead. Um, yeah. Let's see, master up. Oh, it says master's up on ours. Oh, really? Yeah, let me uh, let me drag this over so you can see. This is Chrome, but if you look right here, you see there? Ah, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. All right. Um, well, so let's talk about this chart for a minute. <clears throat> you probably remember, um, back from school, did you take statistics? Yes, I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're going to make it easy. So there was a rule in statistics. It was the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. And mm -hmm. what that said was when you look at a, uh, a, a data set that 68% of the data lies in the first standard deviation, which is that darker blue band here. Do you see what I'm talking about? This one here uh -huh. in the middle. Mm -hmm. So it's very likely that most houses are going to sell in that dark blue band. Okay. The second standard deviation is this lighter. It's a wider band and 95% of houses are going to sell within that second standard deviation. Okay. okay. Now you don't have to be a math whiz to figure this out. Basically what it says is about two thirds of the properties are going to sell this close to the line. And the other third are going to sell kind of further out. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we want to be in order to, you know, if, if we get up here where this one is, we better be able to explain why right. the heck it's going to sell for 320. And this nice one down here only sold for 257.2. Okay? okay. And I can tell you this one, it's like I said, we've got a real estate agent who's a bonehead. Yeah. 44, because they don't know how to price houses. So if I, 44 is the address, Santa Fe. So here it is, 44. Yeah, three. Oh, four. four. No, we're talking about, yeah, four houses right there from 44. The same street. Which, which I'm sorry, which, what was the address of the bonehead uh, house? That one is. Oh, uh, the bonehead, uh, 4425. Okay, so 4425, here it is. 
That one's for sale, though. Hold on. It's supposed to be. Wait a minute. This one is showing active. Why are we not showing any actives hmm. in MLS? Hmm. Probably because it's reading it as active option. That's why. Would be nope. It's not the same one. Oh, I know why. My data, here's why. It hasn't updated. This thing must have just closed, I'm going to guess. It was 4425. Let's see here. I bet we find it here. Under the solds, 4425. Here it is. Uh, okay. Is that the same house? No. no, that's Santa Cruz. That's a different street. Oh, I'm sorry. We're looking for Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. It is Friday. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, I'm not seeing it in here. Well, let's 4425. Counseled. Hmm. Okay. I was counseled. Ah. Uh, yeah, that was way overpriced. It says here it's active again. Yeah. For well, it says 623-2019. It's for lease. That's why. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. All right. It's confusing. Um, that one was canceled. Okay. What we would probably do because of that is just get rid of it. Because okay. it's not on the market anymore. Didn't sell. Okay. Okay. It doesn't, the only ones that affect the value are the closed ones under it. Ah, okay. Okay. These okay. endings, they don't even affect the value because we don't know where they're going to close. Mm -hmm. So if we look at the list of closed ones, click on that tab there. Hang on just a sec. Yeah, you're fine. Hey, pal, I'm on the uh, call with uh, Andre. Everything all right? No, I was just checking to see if the copy that are worked okay for you. Yeah, yeah, we're all, we're good. Yep. Okay. I didn't know if I captured everything I needed, but I think it probably worked all right. Yep. Okay, appreciate it. I'll get back with you. Okay, thanks. Bye. Um, everything here looks. I mean, you've got a couple of hat. Look, here's one that sold for 108 bucks a foot, and then here's one that sold for 189 a foot. Oh wow! Normally, what I would do is go in here and look at this one and go, "Holy cow! What happened here? Was this a uh, foreclosure?" And if I look at it. The hardwood floors update, yeah. Popcorn ceilings. It's got drapes in it. So I'm just wondering how much of this is original. Yeah. It looks like the original kitchen pretty much. Yeah. Um, I It's got hardwoods, but, oh, wow. Blue? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's got to be repainted. Oh, and they actually put the master. Is that how that? layout is maybe that's the usually like the media room <laughs> a fireplace oh we got the fireplace right there yeah that must be the that must be the master okay all right but anyway uh it didn't sell for very much per square foot now it sold in february that's not a great time of year either um let's just mm -hmm. let's just before we get too deep into these because we've got enough data points where one data point is not going to move it um so I think we're pretty much okay here, just for discussion purposes. Now you're gonna need to get out, when you get to the house, okay, this is where you're gonna go out there and you're gonna do your, you know, you can, uh, oh, by the way, I uploaded the PDF. I don't know if you were, saw it or um, if, if I can email you a copy of it. Um, would that be easiest for me to just email you a copy of the placemat? You don't have to use it, but- if No, no, yes, that, that'd be great. Okay. And I've actually, you could use my listing if you just want to repurpose 
my listing um, presentation. Let me see if I've got. Uh, okay, I don't think I have it in here. It's got to be in here. Shoot. Hmm. Uh, let's check in here. Here it is. Oh, it's under cliff listing. Let me see if I've got it in an EXP. I think I have an EXP version of it. Um, yeah, here we go. Um, okay. So if you would rather use a PowerPoint that you can... Um, here we go, that you can edit as opposed to a PDF that you probably are going to have time. You almost need to take a monitor out there to see that's because it's so big. <laughs> um, yeah. You can okay. you can edit this if you want. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like that. Uh oh, I thought I had the EXP stuff on here. I could just change out. The, you tell my boy, yeah, the Clifford Freeman Group. Yeah, God. Yeah, I could just change out the logos. Because I've got okay, uh, but hold on just a second here. Ah, oh, man. Oh shoot. will just save you a lot of time. Oh, darn it. Please work. Here it is. Goodness mm. gracious. Sorry about that. <laughs> like I knew I had it. Yeah, here we go. Okay, now it's all. Now it does say powered instead of brokered. That's all right. I was going to. Yeah. yeah. But it's got this stuff in here. Now, this is my personal one. I mean, you're welcome to use it just like it is. Um, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, rather than reinventing the wheel, I definitely would, would take it. <laughs> yeah, now I think if this one has my, yeah, this one has a video in here for Matterport. So okay. I'm going to have to send you the Dropbox link because it's too big. Um, but it's all in here. I actually do cruise certificates, and you can use this. Uh, it's just that they're not doing cruises now. Um, and this actually, this number is closer to 6,000, so let's change that. Um, buyer advantage program uh, that's the old buyer advantage program so let me get a new one in here um, you going to let me pick the one I want? Uh, 
let me see if I'll just see if I can drag it in there real quick. Uh, okay. um, let me see. Yeah, this will save you an inordinate amount of time trying to recreate the wheel here. Um, uh, and I actually need to give you a link to this new agent packet here. I'm going to move this listing presentation in there. So I think what I'm going to do is um, just give you a link to this entire folder. Okay. Because it's got a bunch of other really great stuff, and it also has the NAEA stuff in here. So okay. let me uh, let me get you a link, and then I'm going to chat this to you, and you can be downloading this stuff. It's a pretty big folder. Okay. But you can go ahead and download it while we're waiting. Uh, and I'm going to put the Buyer Advantage program back. Oh, nice. Okay. Here. Yay. All right. Except, what the heck happened there? Yay. All right. There we are. Okay. It's not really a great, God, man, that's horrible resolution, isn't it? <laughs> okay. I'm going to, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, actually, let me save this and then I'm going to recopy it over here. Okay. Okay. Boom. We're all set. So you've got listing presentation and that as well. So, all right, back to APC. All right. Are you with me? Yes. All right. So we're going to go back here. And as you do the exercise that we talked about today, knock on the door, remember all that stuff. You know, and even if this is somebody you know, you just, you know, just try to run the protocol here. Um, you know, you're going to walk in. Hey, are you excited about getting your home sold? Let's get her sold, right? Start yeah. off on a good foot and then say, who's going to give me the grand tour? You go around, you do your thing. And then so now we're ready to go back. We've done the grand tour. I've got my notes. I've taken the measurements and I'm ready to sit back down at the table. And I go through the listing presentation. Okay. Now you have a choice. The folder that says NAEA in it, this is uh -huh. the folder that I've just sent you a link to right here. Okay. okay. And this folder called NAEA is where the listing display lives. That's this guy right here. Okay. Okay. The listing presentation is in the uh, root folder or it's a folder up and it's right there. Ah, gotcha. Okay. okay. And this is actually a new one. Okay. Okay. If I'm going too fast, let me know because I'm screaming right. through here. No, I'm with you. Okay. All right. So we look at this. Now, the cool thing about APC is in real time, I can have my computer out. You're the seller. And I say, okay, Mr. Seller. So this is like, we're, we're kind of like playing pin the tail on the donkey here, but I'm not going to make you wear a blindfold. Okay. Now what this, what this chart tells us is see that dark blue line. That's actually a re called a regression line. It's an average of all of the sold, all of the red properties, mm -hmm. it's an average of all of the sold properties. So that's, that's what we would say. That's where the market is that line right there. Now there are reasons why homes are going to sell or above or below that line. Okay. Part of the reason is condition. It could have to do with the lot, whether you have a pool, things like that. Okay. 
Now, the other thing that's really important, and the reason why you want to hire me is because my marketing skills are going to have an impact on where that winds up as well. Okay. And how I market the house will determine in addition to the condition and those other factors will, will determine how much money you put in your pocket at closing. We want to maximize that, right? Isn't that correct? Right. Okay, good. So we're all on the same sheet of music here. Now, if we go down and if your house was just average, just like every other house in there, then we talk about a range that would be a market value of between 283 and 288 roughly. Hmm. Now, this is an estimate. This program has never been in your house, never looked under the hood, never kicked the tires, but you just gave me the grand tour and you've lived here for almost 20 years. And I would bet you've probably been in a few of your neighbor's homes, but we can see what your neighbor's homes look like on the inside just by looking at these pictures. Okay. For example, this one, again, unprofessional photos, but it looks like they have laminate. Uh, they've still got the popcorn ceilings in here. Mm -hmm. Let's see if they've done anything. The kitchen is the main thing, but this is, this doesn't look like great flooring. So they have the original, I would bet the original honey oak cabinets. Yeah. The original, these are not granite or anything. This is the original tile floor, the original light up here. These are the old lights that they used to put in kitchens back in those days. Right. Same with the popcorn ceiling. So they really haven't done much with this one. It's pending. It's under contract. We just don't know how much it's going to sell for quite yet. Mm -hmm. But it's but, listed at 300. But it's listed at 300. Okay. So that helps us because it's not in great condition. Now, have you, have you been in this house that you're going to go look at, um, Andre? No, I haven't. Okay. Did you say it was a referral? Uh, yes. Okay. But I do know he has a pool. Okay. So obviously the pool. Now, where do we put the pool in here? Okay, let's look at these adjustments that we can make. Now, characteristics of the property site, including but not limited to location, views, size, privacy, and on-site amenities, that would include a swimming pool. Okay. Normally, if it's a swimming pool, I'm going to give it a five because these other houses don't have swimming pools. And it's only a five if that pool is nice and the backyard is nice. Mm. You see how when I did that, what happened to the value of the home? Right. The range went up from 290 to 293. See what happened there? Exactly. Okay. okay. And this happens. That's what's beautiful about this tool. It happens in mm. real time. If you were to sit there with a bunch of printout from a CMA trying to go through there and figure out what you're doing, you'd be lost. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Cause it's not dynamic. This is completely dynamic on the fly. Now let's talk about the layout. You know, most of these houses have the same layout. Hmm. So unless you've added something on or done something or taken a wall out or done something exceptional, or if you have a nice big outdoor living area that you've built, and if you have, we can bump that up in addition to the pool. Like if you've got a covered patio with an outdoor kitchen okay. or something like that. So we may bump it up another one for, for the outdoor kitchen. Now, condition wise, what we've seen with these other ones so far, and I don't believe, let's look at this one that's sold. I don't believe, they had put granite in and you'll have to see if this is not granite. It's the original stuff, not maybe not the original stuff, but it's not, it's still for Mica. Okay. Um, if they've really done a nice and they have updated the kitchen, but they didn't spend a lot of money on it. There's no hardware on the cabinets. Mm -hmm. um, this is just not expensive here. So depending on what your house looks like, you may or may not be able to give yourself some credit here. Okay. And then if they've done any particular updates or refinements to the home, like if they've added crown molding, put hardwoods in, 
anything okay. like that. Maybe let's say they put new, a what about a new fence, new fence or anything like that? Well, a new fence is really considered maintenance. Ah, but okay. if they went from the low end fence that builders put in and put a luxury board on board fence out there, we could give them some credit for that. Okay. You see that you see the distinction? Yeah. I mean, just because they have a new air conditioning system, a new water heater, that's just maintenance. Okay. Okay. And if it's okay. a new roof, you know what? That's an insurance deal. That's just maintenance because we get a lot of hail here. Okay. The problem is if you have a bad roof, you've got to fix that before you put it on the market. Right. Okay. Quality. So again, workmanship, you know, building components, have they upgraded the kitchen, uh, you know, to finer appliances, et cetera. Have they remodeled the baths? and upgraded them and so forth. So you'll be able to adjust that. You can see if I give that another star, then it goes from 297 to 302, up to 302 to 307. Gives us about another mm -hmm. five, roughly five grand there. Okay? okay. Seasonality. So Mr. Seller, when are we putting your home on the market? Is that as of today? Because if it is, we're going to get a credit for seasonality that I'll show you here in just a minute. And oh, by the way, it says your house is 2442 square feet. Is that consistent with what your appraisal said when you bought the home? Because a lot of times what's on the tax rolls is not correct. And uh, okay. the appraiser always puts the square, the right square footage in the appraisal. So whenever you go take a listing, Andre, you may want to just jot this down. Ask if they have the original appraisal because it'll have square footage in there. Okay. And we always want to sell the most house that we can to get the most money. So if it's 100 square feet bigger, let's make sure that we put that the source is the appraisal and it's 2,500 square feet instead of 2,400 because we'll get more money for that. Okay. Okay. All right. Any questions so far? No, this is good. This is good. Okay. I figured you'd like this. <laughs> now, what's really cool, you're really going to dig this, is the analytics part. So we click on the analytics tab here. And looky here, Mr. Seller. Because we're selling your home toward the end of July, we've kind of missed the prime selling season. But we're still in better shape than we would be if we were to sell it in December. Mm. Okay. So we are getting a $372 credit, which is not a lot. So we're almost at that point of inflection where the market is starting to go down typically. Now we may see they're starting school late. And by the way, the worst time to put a house on the market is the two weeks before and the two weeks after school starts that month is horrible. People just do not get out. All they're doing is trying to get settled into school. Okay. Okay. Just a heads up there. Okay. Now the adjustments that we made, uh, sorry, the market conditions. Now what in the world is market conditions about? Well, let's scroll up here. Do you see what market conditions tell us right now? What does that say? Mr. Seller, what kind of a market is this? Can you see that? It says strong sellers market. Do you see that Andre? Yes. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else for sale right now in the neighborhood. That one that was for sale, they flip it over to a lease. Hmm. Okay? okay. That's a great help for us. In fact, that's going to add that alone is going to add $4,500 in value to your home. Wow. Next thing we made were, were adjustments for improvements in the pool and so forth. And look, I hate to tell you this, Mr. Seller, but a pool is not a great return on your investment. Mm. And I know that you probably spent 40, 50, 60,000 on this pool, but when an appraiser gets a hold of it, they're not going to give you anywhere near that. And there's a couple of reasons why. Let me explain this to you, Mr. Seller. It's not that you didn't actually spend 50,000 on it. It's just that 
not everybody in the market for a home can have a pool or wants a pool. So when you put a pool in, you're actually reducing the universe of buyers. Okay. There are fewer people who want a home with a pool than there are who want a home without a pool, unless you're in Phoenix and in Phoenix, yeah. <laughs> you got to have a pool. Yeah. Okay. But here it's not the case. Not yet. Now, what happens when we take buyers out of the picture? What does that do to the demand curve? It reduces uh, yeah. demand. Mm -hmm. And you know, from your micro or macro class, right? Econ, mm -hmm. that when you, the demand curve shifts and you have less demand, what happens to prices? They fall. Yeah. Okay. So that's why your pool does not have the impact on the market value of your home compared to what you paid for it. Does that make sense, Mr. Seller? Absolutely. Totally okay. get it. So that's why we only get $19,000 in credits because of all the other goodies too. In fact, an appraiser is probably going to give you somewhere between 10 and $15,000 over and above everything else just for the pool. That's it. Hmm. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed the pool. That's yeah. why realtors will tell you one of the worst investments you can ever make is a pool. Always buy a house that already has a pool in it. Cause you're going to get the pool for almost for free. Wow. That's a good point. Okay. Now there are some cases where you've got million dollar houses where they spent a quarter of a million on the pool, <laughs> which don't laugh. I'm about to spend that much on mine here, but yeah, I'll probably get more value out of that because it's not just a hole in the ground. Yeah, it's actually, it's got structures, outdoor entertainment. It's like having another oh, I see building what you're saying. out there. Yeah, right. Yeah. Living area. It's like another for entertaining. Area. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now this is the really cool part. So we've got these adjustments here, and we remember you remember from the front page that's what it said the market value of the house was, right? Three hundred two and three hundred seven. Mm -hmm. Now let me tell you. This program has built in intelligence in it. And if you'll notice here, it suggests a list price of 308 to 313, hmm. which is higher than the market value. So you might be asking yourself, how did the program know that to raise the price and how much to raise it for the list price over the market value? And the answer is very easy. The answer is that in this neighborhood, the sales price to list price has been 98% of list price. So what we know is if we want to get market value for your home, we're going to have to list it a little bit higher than the market value because we're only getting it 98% of list price. So, okay. So explain it again. So we make sure I understand. So the sure. sales to list price means, so for example, if we list the home for 310, Chances are you'll get 98% of that 310. 300, that what you're say 300, yeah. Okay, gotcha. It's not chances, okay. that's what the average is. Oh, okay. The okay. average, okay. Oh, okay. So it that's looks at all those homes that sold, it looks at the last list price and then it looks at the sales price and then it divides the sales price by the, or the, yeah, divides the sales price by the last list price. Okay. 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 So hmm. that gives us an estimated value of $124.95 per square foot. And we can go back to this list and look and see that, okay, well, some of these are higher than that. We could go in here and take a look. Now here's a one story and it's a small home. So it's going to be at a higher price point. Yeah. A lot of people don't always understand that smaller homes are going to have a higher price per square foot. Why, why is that? Why is that? That's a great question. Because when you look at the total value of the home, you've got land and then you've got improvements on top of the land, right? Mm -hmm. When I have a smaller house, I am decreasing the square footage of the house, but does the value of the land change even though I have a smaller house on it? No. 
right. So if the land is worth 20 or 30% of the value of the house and it stays the same, if I shrink the house, I'm not gonna lose money as quickly on the dollar per square foot. In fact, by shrinking the house, because the land, I'm still getting the same amount of land, the dollar per square foot goes up. Hmm. It's not linear. Okay. Hmm. Let's say I have a dog house on a lot. The dog house is worth $10. The lot's worth 50. And I sell the house for 50,000. That's a big number per square foot. It is. <laughs> okay. Let's say the dog house is a hundred square feet. That's $5,000 per square right. foot. So do you see, and if I had a 5,000 square foot house on there and sold it for 50,000, that would just be $10 a square foot. Right. So the land has an impact, you see, and that's what makes it nonlinear. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Okay. All right. And you're not going to want to get that complicated with your seller. But that's good to know. Just, just my own it personal is. enlightenment. Yeah. I suggest you go in here and read the notes. Okay. Because this will help you with the words that you need to articulate with each of those parts of the analysis. Okay. So this is basically helping you help, helping with the, the talk track. It's exactly. Yeah. Okay. And then you can generate the report over here on this last one. Now, if you do the presentation, that's a bad picture, but you get a rather nice looking presentation that breaks down those, the analytics and so mm -hmm. forth mm -hmm. with a little bit of an explanation here. But the cool thing, and let me go back here. I want to get out of the presentation and go back into this analytics part again. We didn't get down this far. And you see these two graphs down here. This is pure gold right here. These are interactive graphs. And if I look at the first one, Mr. Seller, we know that there's not a hundred percent chance that your home is going to sell. If we put it on the market, we have to list it at the right price and it has to be in the right condition hmm. in order for a buyer to want to buy it. Now we can get top of market for you, but if we list it, out of the market, if we're not in the ballpark, if we're not even in the parking lot of the stadium, nobody's going to buy it. Yeah. That, that's what happens if I list it too high. And you can see here on the X axis, this represents suggested list price. Right. And you can see that depending on where you see this moving here, this mm -hmm. is dynamic. It's real time. If I listed at 330,000, the possibility or probability of sale, that's what POS stands for, yep. is 0.1%. Wow. In other words, it ain't going to sell. And probably it's will be on the market almost a year. That's 275, right? Days of yeah. market. It'll be, uh, yeah, and it won't, it still won't sell. Okay. Hmm. If I reduce it to 325, I barely increase my chances of it selling. Because we know from the first and second standard deviation, that 95% of houses are going to sell within the second standard deviation. That's all this is. It's just using that chart, that data in the chart and putting it another way to help us understand where we need to price it. Okay. Let's say I back it down to 320. Well, it's getting better. My chance of selling is now 16%, but it'd be 69 days on the market. If it sold, if it sold, yeah, if, Hmm. So I have a 50, 50 chance at three fifteen, but most people want to be at least here at having at least an 84, 85% chance of the sale. Okay. 
unless you got all day to wait or all year to wait, if you need to be moving on, this would be a reasonable place for us to consider listing the home, Mr. Seller. We could probably get it sold for you in about 17 days with the right marketing. Does this make sense? Do you understand how we arrived at this number? Yes, I do. It makes total sense. Okay. So on the other hand, we can also look at different, if, if the timing is important to you, we can also look and see how raising or lowering the list price is going to impact the days on market. And you see that the higher the list price we go, the higher, the, the longer the house is on the market. You see here? Right. So I would ask you, Mr. Seller, if this is where most people are comfortable around here, where would you be comfortable? Yeah. Okay. And then where do you, where would you like to list your house? Cause that's your decision. It's my job to give you all the information you need to make an educated decision on where to list your house. What do okay. you believe is the right place to be here? Yeah, I think that eight to four percent. Um, Are you comfortable with that? I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. Okay. Well then let's do it. You see how easy that is? That is. Instead of me trying to explain. It answers, it answers a lot 15. of their questions. Yeah. Huh? It, it answers a lot of their questions oh. and pretty much takes away um, a lot of, a lot of maybe the, the information that you lack is pretty much give is right there for you. This is indisputable. It's raw MLS data. When, when, a, when an agent, this is what I tell them, look, an agent can come in here and monkey with the numbers, play with the numbers and get, they could buy your listing. We have a term in, in our business called <laughs> buying somebody's listing. And that hmm. means they can walk in here and tell you your house is worth 350 and you're going to, you hire them because they gave you the highest number, even though it's wrong, mm. even though it's going to really kill you in the end, because the house is not going to sell. And then it's going to be a bloodbath. Yeah. Hi, Diana. I'm just finishing up here. If you'll just, you can watch, I'm just working with Andre here to, uh, to get a presentation together for him for a listing appointment this weekend. We're almost done. So I would have it on my computer like this, load it up just like you got it and go through the real time exercises about how you show them the different data points here and how it impacts the days on market and the likelihood of selling. Okay. Okay. But what you've done is by allowing the seller to help with this part here with the stars, they're going to, they have more faith in the numbers. Yeah. This is much, this becomes more tangible, more believable because they had, they participated in it. If I just set down a CMA in front of you and I pointed a number on there and I say, here's what you need to list your house at, how much confidence do you have in that what was, number? What was that based on? Yeah. Really? What? Yeah. Well, how do you, what do you mean? Yeah. How did you get to that number? Yeah. Are you an appraiser? Yeah. How much <laughs> do you allow for a half bath? Oh, Okay well, what's an extra car garage worth? Or, well, wait a minute, you know, I, you, you took away for siding on the back. How do you know how much that's worth? This, this completely avoids all of that discussion. Okay. And what, what, one last quick question, Cliff, cause I know we have Diana on, I want to uh, eat into her time. Hello. Yeah. Uh, quick question. So with this being my first listening appointment, so the, the elephant in the room, right. And the guy kind of already asked, how do you get around or how do you address the commission and fee conversation? Okay. What, what is your fee? How much do you charge? Okay. So if, if, if I'm going to give you, I don't, I believe in that box in the uh, folder that I shared with you. Oh, it has. Been. Okay. There's a, so I've created what's called a flexible commission program. Let me go back to that. And here's the way you sell it. Okay. Here's the new agent pack and here's the flexible commission program. Okay. So Mr. Freeman created this flexible commission program to be as competitive as possible in the market. And here's the way it works. And you can read this 
it's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. But in a traditional transaction, and I decided that you could either name it six or I could name it 5.97 and it doesn't matter. The money comes out the same, right? Mm -hmm. So I like using nine, seven, seven's a good biblical number. It's also, <laughs> it's also Dan Kennedy's 97 is one of his favorite ways to price thing. If you know who Dan Kennedy is. Yeah. Um, so 5.97, this is the normal transaction that I'm just reading directly from here. Okay. In this case, another agent represents the buyer. Our commission is 2.97%. And the other agent also is going to receive three or is going to receive 3%. That's traditional. Now, however, if we find the buyer and write the contract, then there is no other agent involved. We're going to discount the deal 2%. Now, the likelihood of that happening is about one in a hundred. Okay. Just so you know, okay. that one of your buyers is going to fall in love with the only listing you've ever had. There's, 35,000 other agents out here showing houses and the likelihood that you're going to have the buyer is about one in 35,000. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But when I'm presenting this to a seller, I'm giving them a concession. We bring the buyer. You don't, we're going to discount your deal 2%. And here's the other thing. If you find the buyer, and there's no other agent involved. In other words, if they don't come to us through our marketing, let's say it's somebody that you're, maybe you have a cousin that wants to buy your house or somebody at work that you've already talked to. And I use this a lot with for sale by owners. And I tell them, look, let's say that somebody has already seen your house. You've shown it to them. You give me their name up front. And if they buy the house, I'm going to discount your deal to 1.97 because we're not really having to do anything. To push here. Yeah. And you're doing all the work for us. And literally if you find the buyer and there's no other agent involved and you don't even want our help, we'll walk away from it and let you sell the house yourself. Mm, okay. You know what the likelihood of that is? <laughs> what's, what's the odds of getting hit by lightning? Yeah, I think it's like what one in one and one in a million or something like that. Okay. <laughs> it's something crazy. So, so yeah. your fear is is that we have a standard commission, which we don't because that's against the Sherman Antitrust Law. They're they're just wanting they're wanting you to be flexible. That's why I call it the flexible commission program. So okay. does that sound reasonable? Okay. And nine times out of ten, but here's the thing. If you start talking about commission after you've gone through the listing presentation, they're not going to care what you charge because your value proposition, when you go through and look at that listing presentation and you can demonstrate to them that you're going to get them as much as 18% more because you're that good. You have a listing system. Most people have a listing hope that they can sell the house. They hope that it sells and hope is not a strategy. That's how most realtors sell houses. They hope that it sells. We actually have a proven repeatable system that will generate as much as 18% more. It's a system rather than use traditional real estate methods. We don't bury St. Joseph in the front yard. Sorry. Mm. You can do that if you want to, but we don't believe it sells houses. Okay. 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 No, this, this is good, Cliff. I, I definitely uh, plan you to. You just have to be confident in the way you present it. And you're that way, Andre. You're not, yeah. listen, you're not going to have any trouble with this. Yeah. You just have to, you just have to get familiar with it. Okay. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. All right. So I believe did the Dropbox. Yes, I have. Yes. You got all those goodies in there. Yes. Okay. If you have any question about anything in that folder, let me know. Okay. On a scale of one to 10, how confident are you now to go on this listing presentation? Oh, I'm 9.5. Okay. <laughs> it's always the unknown of, of what if they ask me something that I don't know, right? I haven't came across. Uh, listen, if they do just say, you know what? I don't have the answer right now, but I do know where to get it. Let me get back to you. Okay. 
Okay. May I okay. get back to you? And then after the listing presentation, just call me and say, oh gosh, they want to know X, Y, and Z about taxes or whatever. And just say, I'm going to have to research that. Would you offer me at least uh, 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 to get back to a computer at my office and I'll get the answer for you. Just buy yourself some time to go on a phone call. Okay. Okay, cool. Don't worry about it. You, you got, listen, the good news is we're not flying airplanes and we're not operating on people's hearts. Nobody's going to die. It's right. just a listing presentation. Okay. You yeah. Got, you got nothing to worry about. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, cool. Any Sounds other, good. Any other questions? Uh, no, sir. That's it. Okay. All right. Have you met Diana before? No, I haven't. Hi, Dad. Diana is over near. Uh, hey, how are you? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing good too. Yeah. Well, congratulations on getting a listing appointment. Yes, thank you. It's my first one and I'm definitely looking forward to it. Awesome. Well, getting the appointment is the hard part. The rest, you got. Yeah. <laughs> it's a referral. So it, it yeah. shouldn't, he's not even a, on a competitive listing, so he should crush it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Okay, Andre, I'm here all, all the right. weekend if you need anything, okay? Okay. I appreciate it. Okay, sir. Good to see all you. Right. Thanks again for, uh, man, what a great show yesterday. I've had I know. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it was great, great feedback. Very inspiring. Thank you very much. All right. Well, we'll be in touch. Okay. All right. Take care. Good luck and nice meeting you. Likewise. Appreciate it. Okay, bye. Well, Diana, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. I am so glad it's Friday. It is. I wish <laughs> I was at the beach. Uh, I, I just put this up just so I'd have a better outlook toward the <laughs> toward the rest of the day here, you know, pretend like I'm out at the beach looking out at the water. I know. I'm looking at that scene. I'm like, oh man, I so want to be there right now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I'm excited for you. You've, um, you've shared the EXP business model with some folks. No, I need to, oh, okay. but I, I, what link do I give them? What, how, okay. Okay. There's three or four people back in California that I'm thinking about creating a team okay. and bringing them on board after that. So that's right. going to be like part two of everything. Okay. Right now I've got a few people here that I've been talking to that I would love to throw the model to them because I think I could convert them to us. One girl is part of the old team that I used to work with. Uh -huh. She left for the same reasons I did. Okay. She's with another team right now. She is killing it. Really? Um, okay. Wow. But she, I think she could do better with us. Um, the only thing is with her, she's, oh, I'm sorry, hold on. She's gonna need a transaction coordinator because she's horrible with paperwork. She, horrible. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, those are, Transaction coordinators are everywhere. That's not a problem. Yeah. Yep. Which that's the easy point. Um, but there's this gal that I don't even know how I came across this group on Facebook because I don't do a lot of Facebook, but it's real estate something or other. And this girl reached out. She's in Illinois. And she's like, I just want to know about these different companies. I've interviewed a couple. I'm just starting to take classes. And she said, I want to hear from someone with EXP. And I wrote to her, I said, hey, here's my number. Give me a call. I'm with EXP. I'm new. I've been with several other companies. I can just talk to you about my experience and you can go from there. Sure. She reached out. We've been messaging back and forth. I said, you know what? It, Because there's a lot of stuff on there saying, oh, you got to recruit. You got to recruit. You got to recruit. Right. And I'm looking at it. No, it's like. You don't have to recruit. If you want to, you can. Right. I go, I would love to, but I haven't done it yet. I go, but you know what? I know what the model is supposed to be. Can I send it to you? That'll give you more information on EXP. And then you could give me feedback on what you think of the recruiting end of it. Perfect. Said, I'd love to pick your brain. And she goes, <laughs> okay, great. Send it to me. <laughs> so what do I send? <laughs> oh gosh, that's the easy part. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the, this is so easy. And you remember, um, you, you, um, 
You've already taken a look at Brent Gove's website, right? Yeah. All you want to do is um, go to www.themodelexplained.com. And I'm going to share my screen with you here. So this is the this is the place. It's called www. The model explained. I'm going to chat it to you. I can email it to you. Um, let me let me. I'm going to email it as well. And all you got to do is send this link over to anybody that you want to have look at the model. And Brent Gove is my friend from Sacramento, who's my sponsor who created this video. Now, I believe you've seen this, right? Yeah. Okay. I think so, that's what you sent me and it, yes. I'm a hard sell and it's like, well, Ooh, I like this. <laughs> but it's going to, it's at least going to generate some questions. Okay. And it's going to yeah. give, I'm, I want to get on the phone with these people, Diana, but before I do, they need to consume this. They need a minimal amount of knowledge about um, 